it's Monday night. That means it's time for Dylan Talks Tone on kprlive.com and on youtube.com slash Dylan Talks Tone. We're going to talk about guitar tone. We're going to talk about an interesting new idea I saw on the internets this week. We're going to talk about how to work on your own guitar. And um, whatever else you come up with out there in internet land. So uh, it worked. Everything is working. Everything is working. We have succeeded in launching the show. I assume that there are already some people over there uh, chatting it up on the interwebs. And uh, Leslie, if you would do me a favor and tell people how they can be a part of the conversation tonight, that would be fantastic. So you can find me pretending to be Dylan Talks Tone on youtube.com forward slash Dylan Talks Tone. I'm not really pretending to be him, but I am chatting in lieu of him and sending the questions his way. So there is a chat window there. Um, just come hang out, ask your questions, be a part of the conversation. Um, I'd love it if you introduce yourself and say where you're from. That would be awesome. And then the other way you can hear us, if you can't stick around and watch, like if you got to drive in the car or something, you can go to kprlive.com and we will be on the player live. Uh, we are right now on the internet radios. So for those of you that have just now joined us for the first time, because hopefully there are a few of you, uh, this is a YouTube channel that is basically all about guitar tone. So we talk about guitar stuff um we take them apart we put them back together we work on them together uh there's gonna be more of that we're gonna talk about the, that tonight um and we get down to kind of the nitty-gritty of how all this stuff works um people say that we do a lot of myth busting they like that about our channel so if you have not subscribed um please do so hit the subscribe button hit the little bell button that uh, lets you know when we have a new video come out. Usually it's two or three times a week. And uh, then we do this thing every Monday night at 9 o'clock Eastern Time. So Eastern Daylight Savings Time is dumb. Is dumb. There is no reason to cut an hour off the en one end of a day and put it on the other end of a day. It does not make sense. It just makes people crabby by mid-afternoon. I do not understand, not anybody around here, but I'm just saying it, it does. I was tired. I wanted to take a nap. I saw your post. You were like, oh, man. Well, I was talking to Brianna and she was like, I'm beat. And I'm like, I'm beat too. I, I was so tired. I, yeah, so tired. Um, So, yeah, that was it. Oh, look, we just sold some pickups. That's pretty cool. So we just had a customer. I'll just tell you a live update from internet land uh, we just had a customer buy a telecaster the tele 90 set so or the tele 90 pickup oh, he's he's on he i didn't oh. know what he was talking about oh okay um so we actually have a viewer that just bought uh Thanks. thank you for that uh just bought a pickup and he got a really cool one too he bought the um a, you know a tele 90 pickup so that's the one that kind of has the the feel of a p90 and the construction of a p90 but it fits into a telecaster um hole <laughs> uh pickup route so that's really cool man um so then i don't know all right so let's just catch up on some okay. things that have already been said okay did you just do some kind of post i don't know how are you going to give us half a postal telly then leave us hanging uh -huh. we're gonna we're gonna talk about that okay okay we're gonna talk about the post telly uh the oh it changed it to postal maybe yeah not an angry telly no um no we're <laughs> gonna <laughs> the telly has not gone postal oh okay. no we're gonna we're gonna talk about the fence post caster here in just a few minutes that's part of our little agenda tonight uh the other thing that's on our agenda tonight is we're going to talk about soldering um we've been talking through the week if you follow our facebook page um, a lot about trying to do more of these projects together. I think some of these videos that we've made where we have actually like, you know, like learned how to wax pot together and that sort of stuff have, have been way bigger hits. And I think people like doing these 
projects. And so um, I'm going to give you a couple of things uh, that you can, a uh, couple of suggestions uh, to kind of start this process with me. And I'm going to do the same thing right alongside you. And so we'll be able to kind of do this together. If you have ideas for little projects, if you have a guitar, let's just say this. If you have a guitar that has a problem, uh, maybe it needs a pot replaced. Maybe it needs a new output jack. Maybe it needs, uh, or maybe it's just a setup thing. Maybe it's the action is too high, something, whatever it is, um, shoot me a message or, you know, say in the comments, um, I will tell you these live comments are supposed to go into the chat. It hasn't happened it, yet. It's not working right. Uh -huh. hmm. So YouTube must be rolling that out. So, um, Shoot me a message, shoot me a Facebook message, say something on my Facebook wall, I'll be like, hey, my guitar's broken, I need to replace such and such, can we do a video on it? And then we'll do it together, I'll go ahead and get a guitar, I'm not going to say I'm going to break it, but I'll grab one and we'll, and we'll do that project together, if we need to replace a switch, if we need to install a coil tap, if we need to, whatever, it doesn't matter, um, and we're going to do that. So actually, let's just talk about that right now, so one of the things would be really fun. Um, I wanted to make a recommendation because we get this question all the time. And I got this question like five times this week. And it's like, what basically people ask me, what soldering iron do you use? Because when you do live videos, your soldering iron, it's like amazing and it works really well and it works really fast. And I always tell people that I don't want to share that one because that thing is like wicked expensive and it's really specialized for, stuff that I actually don't even do. It's actually, this thing is actually made for um, replacing microchips and stuff, but I've basically adapted it to working on guitar stuff. So here's what we're gonna do. I actually, and since we don't need that right now, there we go. So uh, I actually am gonna show you what I think you should buy. If you do not have a good soldering iron right now, I think you should get this Weller soldering gun, soldering iron, okay? Um, it's adjustable. It has really, I've used it before. It works really good. Um, and here's how you find it, okay? I set up this little list of all the stuff that we use in all these projects and all these videos. Instead of saying, hey, what's that thing, man? You had it in a video like two weeks ago and then trying to track it down and figure it out, I'm kind of adding it to a running list of all the tools and various things that we're using in some of these projects. You just go to amazon.com slash shop slash Dylan Talks Tone. And at the top of that list right now is this soldering iron and it's under $40. It's really, really affordable. And the solder that I like, okay? So it's on that list. Um, I'll leave that website up for just another minute so you can write it down or check it out or open up another window and go there. Um, it's super cool. It and it, it makes it easier that way when we do these projects together, I can just give you that one little master list to go to. Um, so you have that stuff available. Let's see. All right. We got another question coming in too. So David asks, when wiring a two humbucker guitar, what is the better option to go with series par parallel or coil tap? I'm going to use two mini toggles, one volume, one tone and a three way toggle pickup selector. I'm from Massachusetts. Oh, cool. Right on. Well, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. I appreciate that very much. Um, okay. So, so David, it sounds like you want to accomplish a few things. Okay. Um, Do we mean to have this much echoey reverby? Maybe not. Somebody's saying something about it also. Oh, okay. I thought it was just me that was distracted by it, but... Well, there. We fixed it. Here, I just cut the FX loop down. Okay, so... We gotta have a little more... A little more than that. It doesn't have to sound like we're in a room, but... Anyway. So, fixed. So, um... It sounds like you want to accomplish a couple of different things, David. So, let's talk about this. You want to do a two humbucker guitar and you want to go series, parallel, or coil tap. So if you're going to use too many toggles, it sounds to me like what you really want to do there, and I, you could 
correct me if I'm wrong, because I'm, I'm kind of guessing, okay, based on this question. But it sounds like what you want to do is you want to do a coil tap, a coil split on each of the little mini toggles. Um, super easy to do. We actually have a video on that. Um, if you go to, there's a playlist on our YouTube that is talking about how to wire your guitar. And in that playlist is a video about how to use a mini toggle to do a coil split. Um, now this only works if you have four wire humbuckers where you have two wires for one coil and two wires for the other coil. And then you can put that series link together and you can ground it with that switch. That video is fairly well explained. I kind of drew it on an iPad and showed you so you can check that out. And then what I would do is if you want, um, you don't actually have to use two of them unless you wanted them separate. But basically what I would do if you want two separate is run the neck to one switch and the bridge to the other. Um, and that's that's pretty much it. It's super super simple. Watch that video. That'll pretty much line it out. Um, and that's really it. They're still talking about your reverb. They were like, you turned it down and turned it right back up. You must like a certain tone. <laughs> See, I can't. It's it's there, but it's not as much as it was. So watch this. We could go crazy, or I could go back down to right about there i guess i can't hear it in my headphone man maybe I, I can hear it it i mean it, it was getting on my nerves oh so okay I understand it's possible that i don't, I don't have that monitor send coming to my headphones that might be why all right well there you go fixed again maybe sorry about that and i don't know if it's accentuated um you know for them i don't know i don't know either that's okay Hey, we're always learning together. It's no big deal. Um, so yeah, so soldering iron, some solder. It's on that list. Hopefully we got uh, David taken care of with a way to uh, a video. But that see that video right there, what you're talking about? Um, that is a video that maybe we should do. Maybe we should do that video. And again, but specifically with the tools and actually go through everything. I wouldn't mind doing that. Sounds fun. Um, I actually just today wired up a control plate for a Telecaster for a guy and shipped it out to him that was very similar to that. But I used a push-pull instead of a, a mini toggle. Um, if you don't want to drill holes in your guitar to put the mini toggles in, you can use a push-pull on the volume and a push-pull on the tone. And then you, it's the same switch. It's just built into a knob. And then you don't have to drill any little holes, you know, unless they're already there. So, yeah. Um, let's see. Oh, what are the things I want to show you guys? So, you know, I've, I've been talking about, uh, I've been talking about looking, I've been looking, I guess, not necessarily talking as much, but I've been looking for like new ideas, new things that are hitting the market, you know, People keep going on and on about, you know, Gibson and negative music business stuff. So I'm kind of like flipping it around and like, I wonder what really cool stuff is happening. Um, there's this. And while I'm telling you about this, uh, go ahead and come up with some more questions and stuff. That'd be super fun. Um, this uh, thing I want to show you. Check this thing out. This is, uh, for those of you who are listening on the radio, I'm sharing a pedal that has two little drop in modules on it. And apparently one of them is just the tone circuit and one of them is just the overdrive circuit. And so the way it works is you're able to actually pull these out and change them. So change the tone circuit and you know, the curve, the tone curve and whatever. And also the, what kind of drive it is probably what sort of, you know, sawtooth or square wave or whatever. And, um, be able to tune your your pedal this is a bunch of students at georgia tech who designed this thing and i think they're doing some sort of crowdfunding thing um i just think it's really cool 
Maybe it'll catch on. Maybe it won't. I don't know. But I love the fact. I saw some people kind of bagging on it on the internet today. Like, no, real tone people are never going to want that. Yeah, whatever. Try it. Like, I'm really stoked that they're actually really trying something different. Um, Because if you go back to that picture, see how you've got the main kind of knob at the bottom and then the switch. And then look at the top two parts. Those actually snap out and something else can go in there. I don't know. It's just really cool. It's a neat idea and uh, something worth trying for sure. I really dig it a lot. Let's see. So somebody's talking about soldering and they said um, all the, they have all the tools, but they need some practice and ideas. So a video would be helpful. Okay. Uh, we have a video on that too, on soldering. Um, he said he has a thunder drive. Thunder drive to put to the soldering iron. I don't know what that means. Um, and he hit me up on Skype. Skype's a tough one. Um, anytime you hit me up on Skype, definitely shoot me a message because I do not have it open all the time. Um, just <laughs> FYI. Your and sound is in my head. I see you. Okay. And somebody wants to know when is part two to the telly fence post coming we're, out. We're getting there. Okay, okay. We're getting there. Oh, it is in the title. So the title is soldering fence post and who knows what else. Yes, yes, yes. Um, gas and bullets. I see you and uh, I will get with you after the show. I can't look at Skype. It's hard to look at Skype because well, I'll just tell you, the sound goes through everything, and so it messes with our heads. Um, <laughs> so I'll I'll chat with you afterwards, um, and if you want, you can send me a Facebook message also. I do not use Skype hardly ever, except for when we do interviews and stuff. So um, it's not very often. So just, just FYI, if you ever use Skype, I might not find you right away. So I, I apologize for that. Um, okay. Well, let's, if everybody wants to know about the fence postcaster, um, let's talk about it. My friend, Jimmy, about probably four years ago, it's been a long time now. He's like, you know what? Just because of all the tone wood, blah, blah, blah. It, it was more of an angry time. I think, I think more people were really frustrated and irritated with all the arguments that were going on on Facebook or on, on YouTube and on the internet. There was a, there was a few really well-known guys that were talking about Tonewood and they were kind of more well-known for being like more angry about it. And so um, he, during that time, he, he came up with this idea. He's like, you know what you should do? You should bolt a neck literally to a fence post and run wires out there and just play it like a guitar and just shut everybody up. And um, and I, I put it off for a long time because I didn't want to be part of that. If, if you know anything about our channel and stuff, I try not to like actually start fights. That's not really why we're here. Um, but I feel like the world is in a little bit different place. Everybody's trying some new things. And so in order to have fun more with this whole tone wood thing, which it really isn't because it's not a, a true comparison. But the idea is I am 99% sure that when I put strings on this fence post that it's just going to sound like a telly. Now, if, if it, when you line up a 50-something black guard to the thing and play it next to it, is it going to sound exactly the same? Probably not. But one's a guitar and one's a fence post. So, you know, it doesn't really matter. It's just, The point of it is, for me... And we'll talk about this more in part two. The point of, of doing this whole thing is basically just to say it doesn't really matter what you start with as long as the main the main things about a guitar are, are done properly. So your player interface. So I'm going to set it up. Like I'm going to set the intonation. I'm going to set it up. If the neck needs to be shimmed, I did as best I could to make the neck pocket as flat as possible. Um, 
you know, I measured the bridge properly so that it'll be in the right place. We'll actually be able to intonate. I'm literally going to set it up like I set up one of my guitars. Is it going to be perfect? Probably not, but I'm going to try to get it as close as possible. The idea is we put a good pickup in it, we put good wiring in it, and we put a good setup on it. It's probably going to sound pretty good. Um, and, and that is really the point. It's not necessarily comparison A to B as much as it is. It doesn't matter what you start with. There's a few fundamental things. Um, and if you get those things right about your guitar, then everything else is, is right here, you know, in your hands. So, um, that, that's really the reason why, why I'm doing it. So, and it's, <laughs> it's just going to be fun. So one user says, I swear seriously, when it's done, cut it off and send it to me. I will play it for the rest of my life. That's what I saw somebody say that the other day. It's probably the same person. And I, if it wasn't the actual fence post that holds up my gate, I probably would do it. We got a lot of people. So credit to you. We got a lot of people that are like, my wife would kill me. I can't believe you actually like cut a hole in your fence post. And I'm like, I mean, it's just a old piece of wood. It doesn't really matter. I do have to buy a new router bit because treated lumber is really hard <laughs> on router bits. I'm just going to say that. So it cost me like 35 bucks for a new router bit to do this experiment. Plus drilling holes through the face of a neck that, well, I wasn't ever going to use that neck for anything anyway. That that neck right there um, is off of an old project that I had. And I, I basically use that neck for mocking up stuff and setting up you know that's like my shop neck I like kind of use it to just mock up builds and stuff like that so there's really no i'm not attached to it at all but yeah there was some people that were like holy crap you just drilled a hole straight through the front of your fretboard <laughs> it's like i don't know it doesn't matter i think i think a lot of people don't actually realize the lengths that I'm willing to go to and what I'm willing to blow up and what I'm willing to invest into just an experiment. Um, none of you probably knew me when I was in the power sports industry designing motorbike parts. Um, but it was a routine thing to go buy a brand new Honda CRF 450 and go out and test and test and test and test until parts exploded out of the engine and then you look at the parts and you say hmm i guess i won't do that again i wonder what changes we can make and you know spend hundreds and thou hundreds or thousands of dollars to to do experiments that that's that's what it's all about and if i can do these experiments and so that you don't have to and you can just you know order a pickup and know it's right then i'm willing to do that <laughs> plus it's just fun and uh it's good tv yeah Right? I mean, bolting <laughs> bolting a neck to a fence post is a good TV. I get a lot of people saying this is the best video you've ever made. I don't know. It's going to be hard to top it. It's going to be hard to top it. Uh, answer the question as to when. Today's Monday. It's probably going to be towards the end of this week. I had to order a top loader bridge. I thought I had a top loading bridge in stock for that build unless i steal one off of a guitar but i don't like to do that um yeah so um yeah unless i steal one off of a guitar it's possible though uh if it's possible that i might actually be willing to do that it's gonna be this week it's gonna be this week yeah the, the other thing i want to <laughs> So the other thing I want to coordinate with this is I also want to get a couple of buddies over here um, that play a couple of different styles of music because I legit want to test this. I like I I don't want to just go out there and strum a few chords and be like, oh, check it out. It sounds like a guitar. I literally want to try a couple of things. I'm we're going to take the pedal board out in the backyard. Probably not a Kemper. I'm probably going to bring um, one of my buddies. I'm going to have him bring over like a Mesa Lone Star or something. And we're literally going to go out in the backyard. I'm going to have them. We're going to take a telly out there. We're going to take a, some recording stuff. We're going to go out in the backyard and literally do this. Like it's, it's going to be a thing. Um, 
So coordinating the day and the weather and stuff, it's been the weather's been really crappy around here the last few days. So coordinating all of that and making it happen, um, I don't have an actual this is when it's going to be done because all that kind of needs to come together. But I'm hoping within the next week. Uh, really long answer to a short question, but that that is it. Um, so yeah, super fun, super fun stuff. So if someone purchased the soldering iron that you recommended, yes, what should they set the number on? I do not know because I ordered one too. And as soon as, did they already get it? I don't know. And as soon as I get it, I will tell you because we're going to do a video. I'm going to literally. Yeah, and a couple of people are asking for an actual soldering, like how to solder ominous video. Well, that's was okay. Uh, I have a couple, but we're gonna do. I have a couple on the channel already, um, but we're gonna do that very specific thing. So I want to get this. The reason I want to buy it too is because so that exact thing. Because here, here's the thing: when you're when you're working on a guitar, um, let's say you're gonna replace a volume pot. It's possible that you're going to want to use a different temperature for soldering a wire to the back of a pot than you do soldering a wire into the little terminals on the pot, the little lugs on the pot. Um, it's possible that you want to use a different temperature for different gauges of wire. If the gauge is really small, uh, plastic coated wire that is, you know, like 24 gauge plastic coated wire, probably cooler than 22 gauge cloth coated because you can get away with a little bit more heat. So all of those things can be learned. And if we all, it sounds funny to say, and not everybody's going to go buy this soldering iron just because I told them to, but especially for those of you that really want to learn and don't do it right now, this is a great piece to have. And then if I have the same one as you, then we can talk about it. Um, and I can tell you, this is where I'm soldering. Set the knob right here, and it's taken about this many seconds, you know, to heat up and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So that's that's why I'm buying it. Because I actually really like the one I already have, and I have no reason to replace it. But just for the purpose of let's learn together, um, I'm gonna do it. So I'll probably have mine probably Thursday. And as soon as I get it. Um, I'll start soldering with it. Maybe I'll try to shoot a soldering video on Friday. I'm thinking. Um, so basically as fast as Amazon can get it to me. Because I'm literally going to order it from the same exact place you you do. If you order, order that. Um, and that solder is really good. Um, that, and that And that roll will last you. I mean I solder every day. I use a piece of solder... A foot and a half long every day and that solder lasts me quite a long time so if you you know are, are a hobbyist and you don't want to order that much I think you can actually go to that same link but then click on it like that's a pound or a half a pound or something I think you can click on it and get less like get a smaller quantity if you don't think you're gonna go through it um, as quickly <laughs> as I might since I'm doing it uh, every day um, so yeah Hopefully that answers the question. I mean, we'll we'll do it together and we'll learn it together. Is it ever okay to use a soldering gun? Soldering. I did it again. <laughs> yeah, that's my weakness. Yes. I always mess that up. Gun instead of iron. Yes. No, it is never okay. Um, and we're going to talk about that in that video. Um, soldering. I, I, I propose we change the spelling of that word. <laughs> oh, I know. I, I really, I almost, I, I'm really seriously thinking I might actually order one of those too. What do you use a gun for? Well, a soldering gun. So it's like this big trigger. Um, so, okay, let's go back to the picture and I'll show you why you don't use a soldering gun. Okay. Um, the, the way you create heat in a soldering gun any soldering thing is a transformer 
that basically gets hot. That's more or less what it is. It's a coil. It's like a guitar pickup, and it literally has a magnet in it and a coil. It it's it's a coil, um, and instead of creating motion, it creates heat because it's a lot lower uh, resistance. But the soldering irons that we use, all that stuff is over there in the stand, and then the electricity comes out um and there's a little ceramic deal inside that cylinder and that's what heats up the reason and that's not exactly how they work but for the purposes of our conversation the reason you use this kind is so that that transformer is not close to your work because when you use that big trigger one uh first of all it's not very precise second of all the uh heat is not as constant because you actually have to hold it's it, it's a pain to use it because they're too big but third and the most important thing is you can demagnetize a pickup with it i mean that's you can demagnetize a pickup with it so um it's literally an electromagnet and i have done it i've tried to do it and i've done it um Maybe I have one. Actually, maybe I still have one out in the shop. I'll go look. I got rid of all that stuff because you, you really shouldn't use them. But I think I might have one. I'll go see. Um, Because it would be cool to be able to show you literally what it does. Because it will... It'll screw up a pickup. Not maybe as quickly as a Neo Magnet from that other video that we did. But in the time that it takes you to work on your guitar, you can you can mess up a pickup. An Al Nico pickup. You can mess it up. So a Telia Strat, you know, something like that. Um, a good humbucker. Stuff like that. What else you got over there? Anything exciting? No. <laughs> I'm still laughing at myself, honestly. <laughs> For, uh... I don't know that... I've said it wrong since we've been on video, so it feels a little more embarrassing. <laughs> That's really funny. Oh, I got another viewer that ordered some humbuckers the other day for a guitar, so that's pretty cool. We're making a lot of pickups right now. We're making a lot of pickups. It's really, really busy. It's been super fun. Um, well, cool. I don't have a whole lot tonight. I didn't have a whole lot, and I was hoping that everyone was going to be super excited and ask all kinds of questions. All kinds of questions. And uh, keep I'm us scrolling busy. back to see if I missed see if you missed anything. any. Yeah. I'm stoked to have. Uh, I'm making a single coil pickup with the El Nico bar magnet instead of poles to guarantee even magnetic field on the metal poles. Any ideas? Yeah, I mean, blade blade magnets are cool. Um, most of the time, I use a blade magnet when I don't know what the string spacing is going to be. If Just I, say magnet like you're magnet, from like Minnesota, a, like or, from Minnesota or Wisconsin. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's an interesting thing. <clears throat> because there, there's a lot of conversation about that, so... If you have a bar magnet versus six poles, you have more magnetic field with a bar because it's got more surface area in relation to the string. However, the shape of it is different. Um, I don't think I have those pictures on here anymore. I had, <clears throat> I had some graphics that I could show you that were... Basically, a pole magnet has like this upside down teardrop sort of bloom on the top, but it's it's a circle. It's round, you know, because the, the top of the pole is round. But a blade has like one long one. So the string, uh, how do I explain it? The inductance pattern in the pickup is different because the magnetic field 
is a different shape. So you can wind them exactly the same and they will work exactly the same, but they will sound different because the magnetic field is a different shape. But they won't sound different. This is, I'm trying to see how to explain this. It's not for the reason that you think it is. You would think that it's like the coverage of the magnet. Um, like there's gaps, but it doesn't matter. Those gaps don't matter, I guess, because the string never moves outside of it. Okay. What the difference is, is in the continuous shape of the magnetic field because they do overlap. So you have two round ones here. Let me grab a guitar and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. Um, uh, hang on one second. Let me grab this guitar and I'm going to show you exactly what I'm talking about here. In fact, let's get, let's get, uh, um, another camera going here and I'll talk to you about this. So here we go. Okay. So what we're looking at here is, oops, is when you have the magnets, you would think that there'd be like this sort of like gap in coverage between them. But the string doesn't move all the way over here. Okay. It does. It moves in like this funny ellipsis. But the magnet coverage is bigger than just the size of the magnet itself. It is also bigger this way. You want to know something really weird too? I'll tell you something really weird. Um, that you might not ever have realized before. When you look at a magnet on the guitar, did you know that the thing that causes inductance in the pickup, that causes the pickup to work, is only the vertical distance between the, it and the magnet as it moves side by side? Doesn't matter. So the motion of the string is is in this like weird crazy eight it does this weird kind of crazy eight motion back and forth but the thing that causes the inductance in a string is not the back and forth side to side as you would think it is actually only the up and down um because that is how well it's how inductance works so as the mass moves away from the magnetic dipole and towards it and away from it and towards it and away from it and towards it. That's what causes the electrons to move back and forth in the wire side to side does not up and down does. Fortunately, when we push our string to the side, it doesn't only move side to side. It goes kind of like this. Okay. So when you have a, pole versus a bar, the side to side motion doesn't really matter anyway. What does matter is you've changed the magnetic field for up and down from like these little mushroom bulbs that go across six of them to this like elongated teardrop thing in a bar. So it's not what you would think. Everybody wants to assume that it's like a coverage thing all the way across but it's actually just the shape of the entire thing. Let me put this guitar back really quick. I don't think a lot of people realize that little tidbit of thing about how the, the inductance only happens when a magnet goes up and down. Um, that's a, that's a real one. Uh, let's see. There's this one, and then there's this one, and then there's this one. 
Let's see. Let's build an electromagnetic gauzing device. Uh, I, I used to have one. Um, little fun fact. Uh, kind of a little fun fact. I used to, what I originally went to school for when I was really young is televisions were still a thing. Um, that you actually worked on and you could actually fix and computer monitors especially so um, switching power supplies in a computer monitor versus a transformer power supply in a television uh, but both of them had CR you know cathode ray to cathode cathode ray tubes instead of that was way before flat stuff so um, I had gauzing and degaussing coils for transformer magnets and for tubes because you remember the old days when if you put a speaker too close to a TV or something it would make like this weird green spot in the corner and it would screw up all the the it'd screw up the inside of the tube and then you would have to go around it with this degaussing coil and realign everything so I used to do that. I used to have. Does it make that. me old if I remember that? I mean, it makes anybody older than people. I mean, all we think of is TFTs and LCDs and AMOLED screens. Now, you know, it's a completely different thing. It's not, not a tube anymore. We don't have any tubes in our house anymore. In fact, I don't have any guitar tubes in my house anymore. We have a new tube. I have the Vox new tube up there, but we don't have any tube tubes. Let's see. I have to solder in a treble bleed in both of my strats. What type or gauge would you use? Um, if you solder in a treble bleed, you actually do not have to use any wire. You can just twist the legs of the resistor. So mm, let's see. You got a capacitor it's round like this, okay? So for those of you that are listening on the radio, this is terrible radio, but like let's say you have a ceramic disc capacitor and <laughs> or a, a poly capacitor and then it's got two legs coming down. What you do is take the resistor and put it underneath the body of the capacitor and then just twist the legs together. You don't even need to have any wires. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take one side of that and put it on the volume pot that doesn't have the ground on it. And then you're going to put the other side of that on the other leg of the volume pot that doesn't have a ground on it. Um, I'm actually going to do a video on this next week after we get the new soldering iron in. I am not a fan. I'm just going to go on the record and say I am not a fan of treble bleeds. But we keep getting people wanting them. Everybody wants them. So two things are going to happen. One is I'm going to do a video about it and I'm going to show you how to install it because the second thing that's going to happen is I'm going to start selling them because everybody wants them. Hmm. So, and they're super simple. I mean, they can cost like six ninety nine or something. They're really cheap, um, really affordable. And so, yes, so I think we are going to, and so if you don't want to mess with it, give me about a week or two. I got to get the right stuff here because it's a different capacitor measurement and et cetera, et cetera. Um, we're going to get some really good resistors. I want to make sure that they're good. Um, tight tolerances, that sort of thing, because it does make a difference. And then we're going to do a video about it, what they do, how they work, how to install it. And then we'll make them available so that people can start, start buying them. Um, let's see. I've seen people saying that F space and regular is just aesthetic. Um, I mean, you should have, okay. So we just talked about this like alignment thing, right? I, it should be as close as possible because contrary to popular belief, guitar pickup magnets are not that strong. So they need to be about 150 thousandths away from Okay, from the, from the string, and spacing does matter. You know, um, you ever you ever grab a Stratocaster and the neck pickup, like the low E is or the high E is like not even over a magnet. 
And if you put the right spacing in, it, it does make a difference. Um, fender spacing is 53 millimeters on the bridge versus 52 millimeters for a Gibson bridge spacing. So um, let's talk about that for a second. So vintage Gibson stuff, um, humbuckers. And of course, when somebody modified their telly or strat, they just grabbed a Gibson pickup and they just threw it in it, right? So Gibson, vintage Gibson stuff is 49.2 millimeters. It's not even 50. And it was 49.2 in the neck and in the bridge. And Gibsons are kind of more square. They have like a, their strings are like straighter. Fenders actually kind of flare out a little bit. So, you know, the nut is whatever it is. And then what is it? Two and three sixteenths bridge spacing or something right in that area. It depends on the guitar, but <clears throat> so it's like narrower at the net, the nut, and it gets wider as it goes towards the bridge. So, uh, as you had other companies that like started out as fender scale. So for instance, uh, 2475 Gibson having 49.2 in the neck and 49.2 in the bridge is fine. Um, later Gibsons went to 50 and 52. So 50 in the neck and 52 in the bridge and other fender scale guitars that are longer. So like Char Charvel's and Ernie balls and all that stuff. They went to a 50 in the neck and a 52 in the bridge because of that wider string spacing at the bridge. So it kind of like flares out. Now, Fender, actual Fender spacing, like on a Stratocaster, because it is, right? Like it's two and three. I can't remember what that, I, I have it written down. I only use that stuff when I use it. I don't, that's information that I look at a table for. I don't try to memorize it all. Um, anyway, Fender spacing at the bridge it's better if you use a 53 millimeter pickup can you use a 52 absolutely and there probably won't be that big a deal but especially on a strat or a telly because this pickup physically has to be so close anyway um but if you were to put that on something that the strings were way far away from the pickup you know um because you had a lot of neck angle or you had a, you know, like a Bigsby on it or something, you it created this really steep neck angle, then it would be even more important to have a 53 millimeter. Um, because it's all a ratio. So um, there's all, this whole big math. I could show you this goofy, there's a really goofy mathematical equation, but it basically talks about how the size of the string, the distance from the magnet, this is how much magnetic field is around it, per how strong the magnet is and all that stuff. There's a whole bunch of math that goes with that. Um, but the long and the short of it is the further you get away exponentially, it gets weaker. So there is a sweet spot that it should be in too close is too close, too far away is too far away. Um, but if you have your poles way outside the string spacing, that's going to play into that. So it is important sometimes. Um, Let's see. Why don't you like treble? Oh, let's see. Da, 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 da. Um, what size of soldering wire is used with 22 gauge? I use 33, I think. If you go to this link, um, if you go to that link I shared with you earlier, uh, I think that roll is 33 thousandths. That's what I like to use. Um, it's just comfortable. It doesn't make a mess. It's just easy. Um, a lot of people get way too thick of solder in my opinion, and then it makes too big of a mess. So I like to use 30, 33, 22 is smaller and it gets a little bit. It's almost like welding. I don't know how much. I don't want to say it's not, it's like welding, but if, if you don't have enough material, then you're literally like concentrating on trying to get so much in there. 33, it gives you a kind of like a nice feed rate. If that makes sense, it works really good. Uh, let's see. What are your thoughts on using one meg volume pots? Um, I don't have a thought on one meg volume pots. I don't have enough experience 
playing with them for the purpose of messing around and figuring it out. I've used them on a couple of builds by request of the client because they wanted one make pots. And I was just like, eh, I mean, I, I get it. I don't, I don't, obviously it's going to have way more highs in it than a 500. Um, but I don't, I, I don't have an opinion about it because I don't use them enough to have formed an opinion. I'm just going to be really honest with you. 500 is my favorite. Um, I think it gives you the biggest kind of range of motion all over the place. And I, so that's, that's really it. Maybe I should mess with that some more. Why don't you like treble bleeds? <laughs> okay. It is 950. Do we, should we get started on this? Yes. Let's get started on this. Okay. <laughs> all right. So, um, let's just talk about how they work. Let's talk about how a voltage divider works anyway. The volume pot on your guitar, as you turn it down, the resistance gets closer and closer to zero. As the resistance gets closer and closer to a zero, being off, the first frequencies to go away are highs. So, what happens is you start to get less and less highs as you get closer and closer to zero because of how a voltage divider works. When you put a resistor and a capacitor on it, what you're doing is you're basically filtering off the frequency so it doesn't so it goes it goes the other way basically it's taking out for lack of a better word it's taking out the low frequencies as you go down but i don't like it because it just strips and strips and strips further and further so what happens is you may have highs but to me personally the tone gets thinner if you're using it with a drive if you're using it with other effects it can make it sound really harsh and I'm the kind of person that uses an amp that has been kind of pushed and then put an overdrive pedal on it and use my volume to control the voltage that's hitting the amp I, I don't look at the volume pot as the volume pot I look at it as a gas pedal. I look at it as how much voltage am I going to hit the amp with? And I like the fact that when you turn the volume down, the highs go away a little bit, it sweetens up and it changes the frequency response of the pickup. I like that and I use that to my advantage. Um, So it just depends how you play. If you want to have the volume go down and have little a little less change, then a volume pot mod works. Um, it's probably kind of poorly explained. I like to have, there's a diagram that I use to explain this. And because I don't use them, I don't, I just don't, it's not on the tip of my tongue to tell you the truth. And I, I will, when we do a video about this next week, um, you will, you will, I'll make sure that it's better explained. Um, saw the preview. Uh, let's see. Ooh, somebody's really interested in the guitar setup. So I saw the preview photo. You had the neck screws going through the fretboard. They look too tall to clear the string setup at a decent action. If you had used countersunk flathead screws, then sure. But again, the round heads will get in the way of string vibration unless the string action is way too high. And of course, those frets are unplayable. Um, go watch the video. 
go watch the part one of that video. All of that is explained. Um, this is just kind of the, the run through. I'm actually going to, I, in fact, I even say in that video uh, that we are going to use a countersink and we're going to countersink those screws in. Um, and I will be able to make all the frets playable. This guitar will be playable on all, I think, is it a 22 fret neck or 21? Anyway, all the frets, um, the action is going to be proper. The truss rod adjustment is going to be proper. I'm going to make the fence play good. It's going to play good. So, um, and if you go watch, you probably just haven't seen the first video. So if you go watch the first video, um, part one of this, it kind of talks about what we have finished and where we're, what we still need to do. And you are exactly dead on that. That is something that needs to be done. We just haven't done it yet. Um, so yeah, and it's nine fifty-five. We have time for maybe one more. I have a PRS with the, I'm terrible at acronyms. Um, pickups i don't like them they're very trebly with that treble bleed help maybe i could swap the magnets out if they're too trebly then a treble bleed see that's a misnomer <laughs> um if if they're too trebly then a treble bleed is gonna make it worse because a treble bleed doesn't actually bleed treble it keeps it so um which is kind of part of the misunderstanding of how they work um, so yeah, that'll probably make it worse. Um, if you want to talk about that some more, your PRS, I, I do not like to just say, Oh, this is what I think you should do to change your tone. Um, because it's possible that you already have in your possession things and tweaks that we could do to make you sound the way you want to sound. So shoot me a message, maybe on Facebook at Dylan talks tone on my YouTube channel, um, on my, um, uh, my Facebook page, facebook.com slash Dylan talks tone. And um, let's talk about that some more, maybe uh, off off the show, because not that I don't want to answer the question for you here, but I want to find out more about your gear, more about what you're playing and how you're set up, because then we can decide if it's something that you can, a lot of times what you have in front of you on the floor, the amp that you're using, all that sort of stuff, the size of room you're playing in, you, you know, um, it's possible. And maybe you've already gone down that road and tried it and figured it all out and just decided you didn't like them. And I can give you some suggestions, but I, I'm never going to be the guy that's going to be like, well, I don't like how my guitar sounds. Oh, well then you need new pickups. You know, I don't really do that. It, it's let's figure out kind of where you want to be. And I'll try to help you do that. Um, and if that means you don't buy anything and that means you just make a couple of adjustments and change some things around then then great because then you saved yourself a bunch of money and a bunch of time and trouble so um you know that's and he said hfs stood for hot fat singing and then he doesn't do facebook oh okay <laughs> um give him my email address i guess and uh he can email me and uh yeah that'd be awesome yeah i'd love to help you out with that for sure that's that would definitely be cool. Um, please make sure that you hang out with us uh, throughout the week on our Facebook page. If you do have Facebook, Dylan uh, Talks Tone is a Facebook page. Instagram is also Dylan Talks Tone. Um, so check all that stuff out because we're doing daily updates and I am doing more stuff from the shop. So like live videos on Facebook from like today, we made a whole set of strap pickups. I stayed live the entire time and we wound a whole set of strap pickups tomorrow. Uh, we're going to be working on some humbuckers um, and we're going to talk about coil splitting and stuff like that. So a lot of that stuff happens. Like if you're at work and I'm not telling you to not do your job, but if if you can get away with, you know, having Facebook going on in the background and just, you know, you do your work and I do my work and we get to talk together and learn some stuff and answer questions and stuff like that. Just live as I'm doing it. I've been doing a lot more of that on the Facebook page on at Dylan talks tone uh, throughout the week, guitar cables, pickups, wiring harnesses, snakes, all kinds of stuff, all the stuff that we do here, you know? So, um, so feel free to check that out and, uh, on some of the other places on the internet and uh, we're pretty much out of time. I appreciate everybody hanging out with us. 
make sure that you check us out every week uh, at Monday night at nine o'clock live here on YouTube's. And uh, tomorrow morning there will be the replay available at kprlive.com as well as um, on anchor.fm so as a podcast because we're actually stripping off the audio and making the podcast. So with that, I'd like to say thanks to everybody and uh, I hope you all have a great evening.